We stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, 
seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be 
Spirit, alone our Lord most high, in God the Father's glory. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity in the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the Feast of the Holy Trinity is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 11. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments, and how inscrutable His ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been His counselor? Or who has given a gift to Him that He might be repaid? For from Him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia. Alleluia. Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and we bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This morning, as we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Trinity, we confess the Christian faith with the words of the Athanasian Creed, according to the insert. We pay special attention to the leader parts, the congregation parts, and there are parts that are marked for men, women, and all as well. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it and will without And the Catholic faith is this. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father infinite. The Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son almighty, the Holy Spirit almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, Father is not made, nor created, nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. 
Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another. None is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and the unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is by faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. Ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. You may be seated.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, you may be seated. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. The wise man, on the other hand, not only knows that God exists, he knows who God is, and he knows what God has done. The wise man fears that God, even as he also loves that God and trusts that God for his own salvation. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Whereas Jesus says it in those familiar words from John chapter 3, whoever believes in God should not perish, but have eternal life. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. But the wise man knows who God is and rightly fears that God. But he also knows what God has done, and so he loves that God and trusts that God. The truth is that most people live between foolishness and wisdom. I mean, and not just most people in the church, I'm talking about most people in the world. The true atheist is really hard to find, even among those who appear to be non-religious. Most people know there is a God, but they don't know who that God is or what he has done. So there's Hinduism with its millions of gods, and there's Buddhism which follows the Buddha but won't quite call him a god. There's Judaism and Islam which agree that there's only one god. There are those pantheistic religions like those of the Native Americans which worship the creation. Of course, there are more recent religions like those which have sprung up in our own land like Jehovah's Witnesses, and Mormons, which are both false teachings of Christ. But the point is this. Even if people don't know who the true God is or what He has done, people can know because it is self-evident through observation of the world that there must be a God. Or maybe there's many gods. So they avoid the mistake of the fool who says there is no God. And yet they have not quite arrived at wisdom. For they do not yet know the true God or what he has done. And because they don't know him or his deeds, they cannot fear him or love him or trust in him. They live between foolishness on the one hand and wisdom on the other because they have only natural knowledge. They only know what they can observe. They know that God exists, but they don't know who that God is or what he has done. And so, what they need is to have God revealed. They need revealed knowledge. They need revelation. Revealed knowledge, you see, is knowledge that is gained through revelation. It's what we know through the gospel. It's what God makes known to us through his word of the Holy Scriptures. And it's the kind of knowledge that we see Isaiah the prophet gaining in our Old Testament reading. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. You see, Isaiah was not there simply observing the natural world and therefore gaining natural knowledge. Isaiah was seeing the Lord God Almighty. What Isaiah was getting was revelation. The Lord God revealing himself to Isaiah. So that as Isaiah saw the Lord and was given this revelation, indeed, Isaiah would know who God is. But Isaiah would not only see the Lord, 
the Lord's servants, the seraphim, those six winged angels also spoke to him. That's more revelation. That's more revealed knowledge coming from the Lord and his servants. And they said, holy, holy, holy is Yahweh Sabaoth. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, through this revelation, through this revealed knowledge, Isaiah not only saw who God is, he also heard from the angels who God is. And what did he do? All Isaiah could do was that he did not deserve to be in God's presence. Woe is me, the prophet said, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And Isaiah was right. For the angels had declared the God who was revealing himself to be not just holy, but holy, holy, holy. That's three holies. Now, just one holy would be enough to establish the fact that we sinful humans cannot stand in the presence of a God who is holy, for holy means set apart. But this God, this, tri- this true God is Holy, 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 which means that he is three times set apart from us and our sin. This is why when Isaiah finds that he is in the presence of this thrice holy God, he knows that he has no business being there. With his sin and the sin of the people in the presence of the one true God who is holy, 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 Isaiah knows what his sin deserves. And he freely confesses it. Woe is me, for I am lost. So note this well, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Having that special revealed knowledge and knowing who the true God is rightly causes a person to fear God. For God is holy and righteous and pure. And we? We are not. But don't forget all that we've been saying. Knowing who God is is only the beginning. Yes, we confess with the Athanasian Creed that in order to be saved, a person must believe that there is one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity. That the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one. We believe that in order to be saved, a person must believe that the one true God is the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God in three co-eternal and co-equal persons. But remember, the creed goes on. And so does the point. To know who God is is not yet sufficient without knowing what that triune God has done. So too, believing in the Holy Trinity is not sufficient for salvation apart from faith in what that Holy Trinity has done to bring about our salvation. So, as the Creed says, and we just confessed, it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the Holy Trinity is who God is. What God has done is revealed to us through the person of Jesus. That He is true God and true man. 
That He is the one in whom the eternal Son of God took on flesh to dwell among us. That He lived among among us. That He committed no sin. And that He died our death. This is all what makes Him the one who then pleases the Father and satisfies the wrath which otherwise we all, like Isaiah, would rightly be afraid of. Yes, we must believe and confess the Holy Trinity who God is. But what is also necessary for salvation is the revelation of what God has done for us in that person of Jesus. In Him, you see, we no longer stand before this thrice holy God with our sins upon us because our sins have been placed upon Him. Jesus came. He shed His blood. Our sin is now atoned for so that we might be cleansed. And indeed, we are cleansed. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. The very same Father who sent His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish, has also sent forth the Holy Spirit who cleansed us as He binds Himself to the waters and the word which were spoken at our baptisms. And there, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit gave us new birth by water and the Spirit, which is how Jesus Himself says a person must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, how marvelous is this mystery. And how full of mercy is this God. Not only that we would be those to whom the only true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would reveal Himself so that we would know who He is, that He has also revealed to us how He has acted, so that we would be those who know what He has done. And it is what He has done, you see, that makes us who rightly fear God's wrath because of our sin into those who are also able to love Him and trust Him because of what He has done. Just think about it. When Isaiah had seen who God was, He rightly feared God and confessed what his sins deserved. But then, then God acted. And his actions changed everything. Upon Isaiah's confession, one of the seraphim flew to him, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched Isaiah's mouth and said, Behold, This has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Revealing who God was has caused Isaiah to be afraid and to fear God's wrath upon sin. But it was God's action that brought the good news of the gospel. Sin atoned for and guilt taken away. And this, you see, is how it is for each of us. Yes, We give thanks that the holy triune God has revealed Himself to us so that we are not blind or foolish, but can speak of what we know and bear witness to the truth that there is one God in three persons. But if that were all we knew, we should also cower in His presence because of our sin. But this God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is also the God who acts. And He acts in love because acting in love is perfect righteousness and is what makes Him holy, holy, holy. For sinful Isaiah, this thrice holy God acted to cleanse him of his sin so that he could stand in His presence and live. For you and for me, This same Holy Trinity has acted to cleanse you of your sin as the Holy Spirit was poured upon you by water and the Word and you yourself became one who is now holy and set apart from your sin. And to know all of this? 
to know who God is and what he has done? It's to have much more than natural knowledge. It is to have the knowledge which God himself has given to you through his own revelation. You are blessed to know who God is, but you also know that the true God loves you and sent His Son to save you and gave His Spirit to cleanse you and make you His own child. These actions of God are what make you those who not only fear God, but also love Him and trust in Him so that you will not perish but have eternal life. Remember, dear saints, It is the fool who says in his heart, there is no God. The wise man is the one to whom this mystery has been made known. And so the wise man worships one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity. For that one God is three persons that has revealed himself to be the Father who loves you, the Son who has saved you, and the Spirit who sanctifies you and gives you faith to believe this, so that you and all who believe this will not perish, but will be saved. In the name of Jesus, amen. To the list of prayers included in the congregation at prayer, we want to add Alyssa Mellon. She fell earlier in the week and broke her arm and is having surgery uh, in Columbia tomorrow morning. I think morning. Is that right? So we pray for Allie and uh, for her uh, surgery and for her recovery as well. We gather our hearts in prayer. Please stand. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For an increase in devotion for all the saints, for the faithful proclamation of the gospel by all pastors in Christ, for an end to schism and division within the church militant, and for the proper fear and fervent praise of the Holy Trinity among all those born again from above in holy baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for faithful catechesis and formation in the faith for our catechumens, both young and old, for a renewed vigor to study God's word within the congregations of our synod and the entire Christian church on earth, for Christ to be fully formed within us, for courage to walk as children of the light, and for strength in the face of temptation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sojourner and stranger, for the persecuted and oppressed, for prisoners and their families, for the enemies of the faith, and for the true repentance of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For thankful hearts, and for the faithful support of the church and the work of the Lord here and throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the vocation of fatherhood on this Father's Day weekend, that fathers would love and provide for their children, and that children would respect and honor their fathers, and that we would give thanks For faithful Christian men, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations and those who lead them, for an end to violence and war, and for peace throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who endure mental illness, for those who mourn, for the lonely and brokenhearted, for those with chronic pain, for the sick and injured, for the hospitalized and shut in, and for all who have requested our prayers including Dorothy, Delbert, Beverly, John, Larry, David, Rudy, Pat, Denise, Barb, Chelsea, Joanne, and Alyssa, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. All glory, honor, and praise be to the most holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy is he whose name is majestic in all the earth, through whom we have forgiveness, life, and salvation. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Be seated.
We continue with the service of the sacrament beginning on page 208. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, Heaven and earth with full acclaim Shout the glory of your name Sing Hosanna in the highest Sing Hosanna to the Lord Truly blessed is he who comes In the name of the Lord Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. You once revealed your name to Moses in the burning bush, and through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, you unveiled the mystery of your holy name in the trinity of persons in the unity of being. Grant that we, who have been baptized in and instructed in the triune name, may faithfully eat and drink of your Son's body and blood and worship you in spirit and truth. O Father, through your Son, in the Holy Spirit, hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. good to dad every day, but give him a special heap of helping of goodness today. All right, everybody have a great week.